everyone. Hello everyone and welcome to the Woman's Cave, I think. This might be a ladies' tale podcast. <laughs> you know, because we have so many. We you know us, we started a lot in COVID because no one should give us seven months home because we don't we don't do no, very well. We do. just create yeah. other things. Like we like have four seven. podcasts, a clothing line, a jewelry line, and a whole new drinkware plus wine line. Yeah, yeah. it was just don't give us seven months, y'all. Don't do it. It's bad. It's bad. Hey, creative people create. <laughs> there, you there you go. Don't let me sit home. Okay, so anyway. I'm Jade. I'm Ramona. Yeah, oh, Jade doesn't have a great job. I don't have earrings on today. I don't know what is going on with my life. I know I need my hands sanitized because we actually slapped hands. And, you know, it's COVID out here, y'all. Mm-hmm. I might live with her, but still, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's go on. We wrote uh, literary life guides with pop poetry is just a, like a really dope way of saying we wrote books, right? That's full of poetry. So, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy, available on Audible. Um, yeah, just a lot of, it's available, y'all. I can't. So out of the, there's four books out of the 17. So I'm going to finish what you started. There's the And I Thought I Did My Journey Alone and If Only I Were Me, which is only available on barnesandnoble.com. I feel like this is opposite day because normally I finish what she starts. So this is opposite day. Well, I'm not and, starting trouble today. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we have the two magazines, And I Thought Literary Magazine and the 25 Hottest. Well, no, not really. I'm going to talk. I have to do something. Magazine. Magazine. <laughs> I just can't, y'all. I can't. Okay, you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. But now for the fun part. Tanya, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> I'm not the fun one. You guys are the fun ones. <laughs> yes. I am the boring and serious Tanya Todd from Las Vegas. I'm an author and actress, and I'm very excited about our guest today. Yo, wait. Oh. Did you want to do it? Go oh. ahead and finish it. So she said, y'all want to hear about us. Do you hear, hear about the wonderful guest? <laughs> okay. Introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. Um, I feel like everyone's going to be underwhelmed with all the things you guys have going on. Uh, Abby McDonald, I'm in Los Angeles right now. Wow. Okay, yeah. we could one, two, three things. I feel like she took the loss and the Angeles is two and three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know bread behind you? Are, are your neck rolls bread loaves? <laughs> They're one step better. They're Cuban bread. <gasps> I was in Florida. Yum. If you've never had a real Cuban sandwich, you're missing out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah. lying. Add it to the good. bucket list. There you go. Oh, oh, so good. We've it's already good. had it. it. It's delicious. It's Although delicious. I still say a mojito in Florida is still not as good as any other drink. I don't like mojitos. Yeah. But anyway, let's move back to you. Back to you. <laughs> Since you, since you just started off with the one to three facts of I'm in Los Angeles, we're going to have to start with what do you do while you're in Los Angeles? What is your job? Uh, okay, I'll give you guys the Reader's Digest version if that's even a thing anymore. I'm dating myself. Um, so I was a talent manager for about 15 years and then I slowly transitioned. Um, when you're dealing with multi-hyphenates, you start producing and developing projects. And I was lucky enough to go be a vice president over at a new network uh, when it was launching called Bounce TV which was acquired by Scripps, Kate Bros, um, Scripps last year, about uh, actually 18 months ago. And then I left and was SVP of a new streaming network called Urban Flix. And now I can't talk about it yet. Um, I'm going to be going elsewhere to be a new uh, development executive. Wow. Ooh, I have a question oh. for you. I'm going to be so LA right now and narcissistic. Do it. Yes. I have a question <laughs> for you. Oh, my girl, girl. Oh, my goodness, girl. Let me pitch. Girl. Anyway, girl. let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> manager sorry <laughs> that was one known as narcissist moment no it was it, it happened to us in la one time we were like oh we're gonna go do an interview and the person was like well let me pitch you my my thing we, we were like i'm sorry we're poets like i think you might want to save this pitch for someone important <laughs> but it was you were already in a taxi cab and it was an hour drive with traffic so, so we heard the whole oh, yeah no when you're in a car out here never say what you do i was makeup jobs i'm like yeah i, I invented <laughs> left-handed hammers like yeah i have so much <laughs> oh. oh okay all right i make bread like... pillows you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally it's my romeo michelle i invented post-its yeah 100 yes <laughs> yeah. okay okay because, i love I mean, these pop these pop things i oh love it God. it was it's fabulous and yeah it, it happened and then i was trying to nicely tell them we were just pop poets so i'm gonna need you to yeah, we were lucky but we we're pop poets anyway moving on let's talk about you and the talent manager yeah because i mean if we're going to do Ladies Tale podcast, we have to talk about talent managers because, well, we wrote about talent managers. So we took a lot of crazy, creative license, y'all. Yes. So, <laughs> what is it like, first of all, being a talent manager? And then, how did you become the multi hyphen? Do any of those? Oh, yeah. So, 
also, so I have a very weird story. Um, okay, go for it. And like health management, story. I always say, is like uh, chasing the dream, living the nightmare sometimes, but it's very <laughs> Um So I, born in Tampa, grew up in Boston. Fun fact, I'm actually an identical triplet. There are two more of me. And we were in the music business. So at 18, my dad was super excited. Instead of going to be pre-med, we actually moved down here to be artists. We were singers and dancers. I'm not gonna buy some. I'm never gonna send you guys footage. Long time ago, um, so I actually started managing us because we always felt, at the time, there were a lot of male managers. And again, I have a ton of male friends that are great, but they never did the job as good as we could. You know, you know, Tanya, as you being an actress, you work for yourself 24/7, right? Right. So my sisters and I, being family, started managing us, and we were very lucky. We got to tour with a girl named Hilary Duff uh, for about three and a half years. Um, Kristen Milian got a publishing deal on the whole bit. Um, then at 25 years old, had a great time, but we were over it. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't go to college. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and my father and mother were always great and like, whatever you're gonna do for a living, you've gotta love it. So I'm like, okay, what do I know about? And I used to love stand-up comedy. So like, I used to carry a Flip Wilson record around when I was a kid, <laughs> like Sam Kennison, Bob Nelson, the whole bit. So I started producing a stand-up comedy show. And we started filming it, and all of a sudden, it was one of the hot shows in town. We had like Whitney Cummings, Chris D'Elia, a bunch of big comics, and uh, Hulu actually saw it. It was one of Hulu's first acquisitions. So I was 26, and all of a sudden, I had a bunch of comedians that were t like, asking me to manage them. So I was like, all right, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I loved it. So a company called New Wave Entertainment, you may know that name because they do all the big specials, Kevin Hart, um, you know, Cat Williams, et cetera. I went there at 26. I was the only female at that point. There were 12 managers, all 40 and up, like all went to Cornell, like UCLA. And I'm like, hey, I used to be a background singer for Hillary Duff. Um, and I was <laughs> so um, originally was just representing stand-up comedians. And as most comedians and artists are, they want to do everything across the board. So not only did I start doing their, their touring, their book deals, um, we took those books and turned them into television shows and I started representing writers and then just straight up actors because I love actors. Um, my my soon to be husband is actually an actor. I love them. So um, off of that, I was there for about five years. And I remember when I got the job and I still talk to the owner of the company. He's amazing. He said, um, do you really see yourself being a manager in five years? And sassy little me was like, no, I'll probably have your job. I'll be running a network in five years. Oh, and wow. Years, <laughs> here's a crazy story. In five years and a week to the day, I went to go be VP over at Bounce. So it was totally sandwich. <laughs> and what was amazing about that- You company, called it, right? You called the I shot. Did. <laughs> <laughs> I like pointed. Um, what was great about that is when I went over there for about four and a half years, I was bifurcating my responsibilities, running the development and current programming with my boss at the time, who I still am friends with, but I was still representing six to seven actors. So um, I was going back and forth and management to me, to go back to your original question, it's, to me, it's very intimate. You're in charge of someone's livelihood for 24 hour days, 24 hours a day. But I've noticed, and I'm sure you've experienced this, a lot of managers don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, it's a lot of trial and error the first few years, but um, I sit down with my clients and I kind of do like um, speed dating. I'm like, whose career do you want to emulate, emulate? So like, if you want to be at a client that wanted to be like Tina Fey, she was an amazing comedian, so mm -hmm. got her a book deal. It was one of New York Times best-selling books, then got a deal with Happy Madison, ended up selling it to NBC. So it's not rocket science, it's just connecting the dots, and then also spending a lot of your free time, because again, I, I don't have children, um, so unfortunately, a lot of my extra time was just dinners, drinks, meeting people, and over the 18 years, all those Did you say unfortunately? <laughs> yeah, so I, I was like, doesn't that sound like fortunately? Well, unfortunately, I'm, my life consists of I, I all this fabulous fun. <laughs> well, I don't want to diminish being a mother because, you know, I know it's very fulfilling, but um, I, I can't have kids. So it was never like in the books for me, but I know a lot of friends that their lives have kind of evolved and they love it. It's not for me. Um, open for babysitting. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I it sounds like you have a very nurturing, you know, persona because you, you nurture your clients and you think about what they want in their futures. You're not just, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. You said yeah. you sat down and talked about how they saw their futures and helped them to achieve that. Yeah, and I think for me, what a lot of representatives, and again, not to be disparaging, a lot of reps, what I've learned, some of them wanted to be actors or famous and they didn't get it, right? 
for me, I got to live that world and I love being behind the scenes now, like love it. And if you're looking at it like a business, the client is the CEO, the agent is the CFO, because they're just looking at money. They're like wheeling and dealing deals, like take this, but the manager, in my opinion, is the COO. They're your strategist. And the clients that I'm very lucky enough still to this day to work with, we're very, we talk completely openly, like whatever they're, they're feeling that day, politically, religiously, I have, to, I have to know them intimately. I mean, for one of my clients, I was her maid of honor. So <laughs> it's, um, I take it really seriously because I also know because I've had to manage my sisters and myself, how much, you know, a week for an executive is the equivalent of 24 hours to an artist. You're like, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? So I think for me, it's also kind of easing any fears, um, updating them on trends. Cause you can be an incredible actor or actress and a lot of people have left because they didn't think they were good enough. I'm like, no, 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 no. Now being on the development and executive side, I'm like, Hey, you know, you weren't in the right trend at that time, or there was nepotism involved, or you were an inch too tall with the person they were casting. So I think for me, it's helped me to educate people on behind the scenes. Plus, you know, also looking at things like budgets, et cetera. I'm like, Hey, they couldn't afford you or they're taking this role and they're putting it here. And it's not where you actually want to end up going because if you want to be the next Tina Fey, if you do this project, it's going to hurt you here. So for me, it's like a puzzle and it's an absolute blast still. So and you get to be in the know if you're behind the scenes. You see what all the pieces are and what's going on rather than wondering what is happening. <laughs> yeah, it's bringing it back on a macro scale. I'm like, hey, like it's going to be fine. Um, but again, like being behind the scenes, I still get to be creative in, in this business. Because if you can pay your bills by working in this business, you've already won the lottery. Right. That's the goal. That is the goal right there is to be able to make enough money that you continue creating your art. Yes, because I mean, you know, with the change in like the whole landscape, back in the day, you could, you know, book a series and get a ton of residuals and like live happy and you're fine. Mm -hmm. Now with, you know, A, the good side, all the great opportunities, all the places you can be on, you know, different programming, but you know, you're not making what you made back in the day or they're bringing residuals back or, hey, we chopped the time down from 22 down to 19. So now SAG rules don't apply. So it's been really interesting to see the, the change, but also the evolution. But yeah, it's... um. It does take a, a lot of time. I was married before once and I uh, worked on my honeymoon, probably not a smart decision. Um, <laughs> live and you learn. Um, but I yeah, no, I, decision. work has to be done. Love is love, work is work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a slice of heaven, take care, take your bags. Um, Pretty much. Yeah, kidding, meant it. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think I, um, I, I'm lucky enough to that I get to work with incredible actors, but I also just have such a respect for what actors have to do. I mean, the one thing I can say is I understand the word no, because if you go in for an audition like once a week, I'm getting no sometimes six to 10 times a day if I'm pitching multiple clients. Um, and you know, I've had clients that get booked and all of a sudden they're like, hey, you know what? We're gonna cut that role. We have to recast. So I know the struggle, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a, a total roller coaster, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Sounds amazing. I'm not yeah. gonna it almost sounds like I wanna take like I wanna like take license and ask for a second narcissism moment, but I'm gonna let that go because <sighs> hey, well, I'm I was like, sure you don't wanna ask? No, we're in the part of the tree of trust. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I'm going to ask then. Oh. But, come on, share with the class. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna be like, so um, did you want some pop poets as your as your next clients? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> don't you do it. Don't Tell do it. <laughs> She's not doing that anymore. <laughs> but your bangs are amazing. Sorry, I'm sick. You don't need the earrings, by the way. Thank <laughs> Look you. Good. I thought I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot my ear. It's, no, no, I broke. It's what it is. It no is. one would have even noticed if you hadn't said anything. Well, I noticed that I was like, they're missing. Okay, so here, here was the thing. I looked and I was like, why are my cheeks looking so round and not so angled? Oh yeah, my earrings. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya. Tanya. Look, no, I'm no. not wearing earrings either. Is that better? <laughs> thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you. You feel better. You know why? Because nobody sees when I wear them. <laughs> Tanya, <laughs> they are hitting you have my Tanya. hair, and then I have to untangle them, and so oh. it's just not worth the trouble unless that, it goes with the outfit. That struggle is real. That's, <laughs> it is. That's why you wear clip-ons, because, you know, when you have your hair, like, I, I've learned this many times because, you know, on interviews, I would be tossing my hair about oh, before and be like, so what? Fun. And then my, it would get stuck. And then you're just stuck there because then your hair looks like this the entire rest of the interview. <laughs> yeah. And so you just wear a clip on. So when the next time you flip, the earring goes with it. It's yeah. like, yeah, hair and you jewelry. you can see it. Hair and jewelry. It, and in slow motion. Now, I'm like, more dramatic too. If you want to make, oh, let's just talk. Let's just talk for a second. 
Right. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> Instead of what did you say? You not use it here and spend all this time on doing. <laughs> wow. Well, okay, sorry. Yeah, funny and like me, I'm sitting next to her, like no, in my head, slowly. In slow motion. You know this is going in the next episode. Of yeah, Georgia. it has to go Tanya, in. Tanya, you have questions. I know you have questions. I do. So when I looked you up on IMDb and saw your projects, I was pleasantly surprised to see a lot of brown faces on the covers. Is that mm -hmm. intentional? Um, you know, for me, it, you know, when I went to Bounce, initially I'd gone over to, for Laugh, which is a sister company. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it was intentional. It was African-American um, network, which if you haven't seen Bounce, again, I'm not there anymore still love everybody there you know they've done amazing projects they're continuing to grow um so yes it was intentional i think right now in the climate that we're in it's an interesting time as far as some some changes um mm -hmm. so for me as someone that's mixed it's really exciting not only to see african-american but seeing also a jump in um, a little more hispanic asian etc i think you know as someone growing up when you're watching the screen and you're like i love friends i don't know anybody that i look like <laughs> i think the closest right person exactly I mean, you just know. it hurts when you don't see anyone who looks like you on tv it's like well this is the way life is supposed to be but not for you you know <laughs> yeah and it's yeah. the same thing in books and movies yeah and when i think when you're watching to that entertainment and you're checking out for like a heightened reality and you get the storybook ending in some of those great movies, you're like, oh, we don't, we don't get that because I, I can't relate to my, my avatar is not on screen. So yeah. Right, it's, exactly. It's, yeah, so even a lot of brown faces, but it's also the explosion in female leads too, for me has been really exciting. So it's not like the damsel in distress and the whole bit. So yes, to answer your question, long-winded, 100% intentional. Um, and you know, and also as I move forward and other things, it's, who's the best for the project. And a lot of those people just happen to be, you know, our culture is, you know, diverse. So yeah, it was intentional, but also um, I think it was also just serendipitous too, because there's an incredible amount of talent in our communities. So yes. And sometimes it's not about going for the brown face. It's just including them in the mix of people that you select. That's, yeah. that's all anyone's asking is yeah. let us be in the room too, you know? <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I did notice that there are both original shows on Bounce and shows from major networks on there. How does that work? So, you know, when you're launching a new network, you know, a lot of the times, if you don't have a, a big celebrity name, like for instance, you know, Kevin Hart has LOL. When you've got a tangible name, you can kind of get a huge audience a lot quicker. So when you're building a new network, like for instance, Pop, who I'm sure you guys, if you haven't seen it, that's where Shit's Creek came from, all that stuff. So what they'll do is to build out the library and also to give some answers to their investors is they'll set up pre-existing licenses, old films, old TV, et cetera, that fit the brand. And then they'll include original content to kind of get their new um, voice and brand for that specific network. Mm -hmm. um, so when you launch any network, that's usually how it goes. I mean, that's how Netflix kind of started too, right? It was a catalog of movies. And right. then their first series, House of Cards, amazing, was their first, you know, kind of jump into the original world. So most networks, when they launch, if they don't have that existing catalog, because also if you're watching the originals and you love it, but it's sitting next to something that you already recognize, it already puts it up into a, uh, a set precedent of like, hey, this is a real network. So a lot of places do that. Okay, Which I learned when I went there, I did not know that. So a little lesson for me. Jay. Thank you. I, I, I do want to know a little more about your new position now. What is it that your, your new position is going to entail? So <clears throat> I can't talk about it yet because I have a pretty ironclad NDA. Um, right now, I do still um, have the clients that I represent, um, and I'm still producing a couple of projects. But without giving it away, um, it's a network studio that is um, definitely, when you hear the name, it puts me into a different category. And I've also been meeting at other places too that once I can talk about it, I do think to go back to your, your um, statement about brown faces, et cetera, I think with this mandate people have, because a lot of places I'm like, hey, you've got these great actors and great content, but your executives sometimes aren't necessarily feeding to the audience that needs to see it. So some of these places that I'm meeting with or where I'm going, um, they haven't necessarily had someone like me before. So to answer your question, it will be development um, and, and also overseeing current programming. So 
a, a new twist on a wait, Jade. I'm I sorry. You've been waiting to ask a question. I actually thought of one, y'all. I'm proud of me. Um, <laughs> but to go back, to go back to what you said about hearing no, because as creatives, we we mm-hmm. hear no mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. What is your advice for people? I mean, you sometimes you don't get over hearing no, but to deal with hearing no. Ah, uh, okay. Great question, by the way. Um, so for me, I think as artists, the reason that I've been lucky to get on the the business side is we have to think and feeling when we're creating the content, but when you're actually looking at it as a business, you've got to think. So let's say if you've got a project and at this point you've taken it out to 50 places and everyone is saying the same thing and they've all said no, you don't take it personal. You're like, okay, if I'm going to throw $20 million at this project or you know, $50,000 an episode at this actor, what can I do to help them? So I think for me to get around the no, it's like, okay, still use those feelings to generate the creative, but don't take it personal because it never is. And also like, if you like, if you go on for an audition and someone's on their phone or they're eating, it's not because they don't like you, that maybe they haven't eaten all day <laughs> or they're cranky. It could have not been about you. They had a fight with an executive or their husband or they're tired from, you know, staying up with their kid all night. So I would say, realize that, we all do think the world revolves around us, but it's not personal. It really isn't. And there's actually, there's a great book by a guy named Warren Littlefield called Top of the Rock. Now Warren, he's the one that oversees EP's Handmaiden's Tale, Fargo, um, a new show um, called um, Dope Sick coming out um, on Hulu. He ran NBC during the must-see TV days. Like he's the one that bought Cheers, Friends, Frasier, Will and Grace, ER. And this book, there's um, interviews with casting directors, actors, producers, showrunners, everything. And I think it'll give you a lot of perspective. And I've actually given it as a gift to a lot of people and it will help with that feeling of hearing no. And also like if you stick in the game long enough and you also really nurture a ton of relationships, one, you've got a support group. And B, I'm a true believer that no matter how long you stick around, you're gonna get up to bat and you're gonna win. Like Sam Rockwell is a perfect example, like 30 years and all of a sudden he's on stage. Henry Winkler, he was in Happy Days, got his first award for, you know, Barry, how many years later? So I think if you consistently read the trades, read Deadline every day, Mm -hmm. be excited about the the, the journey. Because if you're just trying to get the win, get out now, sincerely. Um, and again, I, I know what it's like to hear no a million times, even when I was an artist and it sucks, it totally sucks, but it's never about you. People got to make money and you just figure out how you can help them. And then if you truly believe that the whole world is wrong, keep at it. But sometimes you got to filter things and just realize, Hey, it's going to be no, but there's going to be a yes. So every time you get up to bat, just be excited just to get up to bat. You don't have to hit that home run every time. You know what I mean? So since it's back on us real quick, and yeah, you know, narcissism. Share the screen with her. I have. A you're not narcissist. Confident. You're you're engaged. I get it. <sighs> oh, like that, that's my shtick. So it's me. Not that. Confident. Oh, okay. I'm back in. You're a narcissist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so no, um, I know you can't discuss your job, but can you do, tell us what a development executive does? Oh, 100 percent. Thank you. Um, yeah. Development. That is what I was asking. I didn't mean to ask where you were going. I want to know. Right. You can cut edit that. Um, so <laughs> development. I always say it's like trying to cook a steak by breathing on it. <laughs> it takes a long time. So development. So the traditional role and this role is going to grow as, as we see the landscape growing and more places kind of having to populate their sites of hours of content plus COVID. We're going to have to make up for some lost time. My job is people will come and pitch ideas to me. And my job is a gatekeeper at the network. So let's say if I worked at HBO, right? I know what their overall brand is, okay? And if I work at CBS, I also know what the advertisers are looking for. So I'll know what the mandate and the company, you know, uh, mandate is, and they'll come and pitch and I'll say, great, this is a great idea. I'll get everybody on board. And if we buy the project, I'm the person that will say, okay, here's the development, here's your, your pilot script. Here is what it is um, as far as your your over your arcing story for the first season, character development, et cetera. We'll get that to a place where it's great. Once we go to shoot it, I will be in all the casting for the producer session. I will help approve the cast. 
once we shoot, now this may change because of COVID, but in the past, usually we're on set. You know, the network suits are on set. Actors love that. Um, Cause we're the ones that make it less fun. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> it's very <laughs> nerve wracking. Um, yeah, suits on set. <laughs> Um, which by the that way, may not have been heard over the, some people listen to this and they don't watch it. So I just want to make sure that people know, no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a fan. Yeah. So we're, um, so we go on set, we make sure that we get what we need. And then once the, the director and the showrunner get the episodes cut, we'll approve the final episodes once they've kind of sweetened audio, et cetera. And we also are the people that also uh, work with business affairs when we're doing the deals with the writers, the, the actors, et cetera. Um, and uh, we're also the people that deal with research. Um, a, um, a part of the company is standards and practices, S and P. They're the people that creatives hate. If you don't know what standards and practices is, this is what it is. <laughs> the red pen. So let's. This is why people want to be on cable or or Netflix or streaming because you you can say the f bomb. You can make inappropriate jokes. Fine. S and P. If you're on NBC or CBS, they're like, hey. That inappropriate joke about, you know, a girlfriend is not going to fly with Johnson and Johnson. So I have to go in with creative and kind of make sure that it fits the mandate. Again, going back to that branding, right? Um, but the development executive is definitely almost like being an internal producer and showrunner at the network. It's very intimately involved with the day to day. So do you have any clues on how to get out of development hating? Development hating? <laughs> uh, um, well I, put. That's a, that's a great question. I think part of the thing is it's in a job, there's always gonna be an aspect you don't like. You know, it's like being an actor or a writer. You love the actual process, but you may not like auditioning. You may hate headshots or having to like lose weight for a role or, you know, whatever. I think to get out of the development notes hell is to really kind of step back. And like I said earlier, don't take it personally, but try to be, um, I don't really know how to answer because it it's your baby. Sometimes I feel like I'm shaking someone's kid when I'm like, hey, you got to change all this creative. And they're like, but no, um, I think it's just a part of the process. I think it's something that you have to go through. It's almost like learning, you know, earning your stripes. Um, but I think a lot of that has to deal with the development executive. You've got to learn how to give notes and also be kind with it. I've seen some, and I, I've been guilty of this in the past when I was learning, being um, a little too direct and you've got to realize you're dealing with someone's art and how to kind of get that information out to them where it's, again, it's not personal, but um, we got to get this where the network can air this and it fits the overall brand. Um, but unfortunately, it's something you, you kind of just got to deal with. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so if you're, an, if you're an author out there, you know how you love, hate your editor? That's yeah. probably what the, like yep. development is. You love, hate them. You be like, oh, I see yeah, that. Great but, analogy. But I really really hate you right now because <laughs> this was but it makes you better in the whole world yeah <laughs> for s and i'm gonna go so if you had a series of books and you decided to do something creative with your series and your editor goes yeah, yeah write no. the whole thing over no. again because that has nothing to do with mm -hmm. your brand mm -hmm. yep. there you are people are people. invested in this in this character you cannot you cannot make them mother of their mother. No, they were nice. No, <laughs> you know, so like Dang. that kind of, as an author, that's how you would, you, like as your content editor would tell you, mm -mm, no. And you'd be like, dang it. Well, and I think sometimes we can all get into, we, we kind of insulate ourselves and get in our own way, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. having an outside voice is like, no baby, that's not gonna work. Like I understand it, but have you thought about this? So yeah, I think, um, you should still filter it to a point because sometimes we're not always right. <laughs> like, <laughs> at all. I have a rule. The money's always right. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a best friend. Because Winona, she told me I can no longer wear my rainbow pants. Oh, yeah. Why? Although she wrote it in a, in a book, it's If Only I Were Me. It's literally, Skittle, it's, she calls the poem Skittles Drought. And she goes, Your Honor, on the matter of the rainbow pants, just look at the rainbow pants. The prosecution left. How bad were the rainbow pants? Did it look like like a volume button layout or what? No, 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 no. It made her look chubby. Yeah, she was like, she's like a very large bag. She's like you, very large bag. By the way, any girl says you look a little chubby. Done. Burn them. Great. Right. Right. It was one of those moments, right, that I had worn them before, and I was like, yes, I look. Did you know we you enough to tell you? You know. And then, and then. I'm like literally driving up the like I'm driving to a place and she looks at me and she was like and she literally says this on the matter 
of the rainbow pants. And I was like, why would that's you That's a good friend, though. That's, that's a good friend. Why would you tell me, though, when I'm, like, five minutes from the place I was going? Like, you could have told me when I got in the car so I could have just, like, turned around and, like, oh, black jeans for me today. <laughs> like, you know, no, no. Anyway, moving past. So that, um, that's what we mean. So, so for, I just wanted to say quickly that a development but is development is when you know when you're like oh a producer picked up my book and they're going to make it into a movie and then you know like 17 years later it's still not a movie mm -hmm. that's probably your development Hades right that that's what's going on well, here's something that I think your listeners might need to know so mm -hmm. first off if you want to get something done expeditiously get into tv because the median amount of time to get a movie made is seven to eleven years and that's short because what people don't realize especially in nowadays time you're making movies for 14 year olds and China. <laughs> like, so said it, meant it. So, you know, for instance, you could have an incredible script, but there could be, cause here's the thing, let me just dial it back. No matter what idea you pitch, you could be like, there's twins that married a unicorn that's got two bear brothers and like, heard it. Your idea has been pitched before. Your point of view is what's unique. So if you're trying to get a movie made, it could be, hey, it's right in this interesting, like low budget time. And right now they're only doing Marvel style movies, or we need to kind of cater to China. And for instance, like comedies don't translate well. <laughs> so I think knowing that if you're going to make a movie, get it as tight as you possibly can. Do you have a sexy piece of talent is attached to it? Is it so good that maybe you can develop into a limited series? But movies are going to be far and few unless it's pre-existing tangible IP. Now, if you've got a book series that's got a following, it might move a little quicker. But I think also if you really want to get into good st storytelling, and again, I love movies, TV's where it's at. I mean, 10 years ago, Game of Thrones would have been a movie. Mm -hmm. and, got all and it would have been a loss, too. A huge, yeah, which the way that ended, oh, so upsetting. Uh, so, um, but that's, yeah. We're still not over it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, um, what were we going to say? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story to itself. And we're turning the show back over to Tanya. Yes. In fact, I'm going to get up for a moment and do, and go get me a glass of water. Tanya. You go to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> go to the bathroom and play. <laughs> Are there any particular types of stories or material that you are hoping to add to your roster soon? Um, I think for me, what will be really helpful is right now, there's stories that need to be told, but we've seen a lot of stereotypical black movies, Hispanic, et cetera, and we wanna see the struggle, but we also wanna see content. The reason I love Shonda Rhimes so much is you take yes. those stories and you can literally <laughs> remove the cast. And you could put any race and the story is still strong. And any sexuality, it just doesn't 100%. matter. So for me, it's, it's about just good storytelling in particular. I mean, I'm a, I'm a total sci-fi fantasy girl. You know, I'm a Star Wars nerd, the whole bit. If you saw my home, it looks like 40-year-old virgin, I swear to God. Um, a lot of, yeah, there's- Well, now I'm upset because the girls talked me office. into doing the show right here at, with this background, and now you don't get to see my Star Destroyers photo in the background. <laughs> oh, we just became uh, spirit animals. Yep, 100%. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, you're yeah. Slytherin. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's it's stories that, you know, it's not just a struggle, it's seeing normal lives. I also think whatever someone's opinion on is as far as what's happening, you know, happening um, racially, people have a stereotype. If you're in middle America and you're a uh, Caucasian family and you're just seeing the rapper and you're just seeing the, the boys in the hood stories, which again, had to be told, you have the stereotype of that's what you think everyone is. It's or, the danger of the single story. Correct. So I think seeing more of those stories. And I also think with the streaming opening up and because there's gotta be so much content, hoping to see new voices. Cause listen, Martin Scorsese, love him. Aaron Sorkin, love him. But I wanna see from a bunch of people we haven't heard from. Because I do think in the, the new times with technology, et cetera, there's some new perspectives that we haven't seen. So, and I also, I, I love remakes. I know why they're doing them because again, you can sell to China, it's ex existing IP. I can't see another retold story. <laughs> like, I don't want to see Big Trouble in Little China remade. Like, it's just like, it's been no, done. I really don't want to see that because it was fine the first time. <laughs> I heard I heard The Rock. I was like, listen, I, The Rock, yeah, would marry him in a heartbeat. But I'm like, I don't want to see him in Kurt Russell's spot. Like, right. Do it. Yeah. Write something for him, you know? Yeah. And like, I love when they did the, the, um, 
They did, uh, did a script reading of Steel Magnolias and Golden Girls with an all black cast. But I'm like, you're, you're taking away from our voices. That's someone else's point of view. And that was right. for the audience. So I'm excited to see something fresh or if we're gonna do it, like really turn it up. Like Batwoman now being an African-American female. I mean, instead of Batman, can't wait to see that. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I read about that and I was like, you said what? I, I, have, to, I have to watch it. Yeah, she's gonna kill it. I, I, and I looked at her, I was like, I, and I went back and I was like, why would she? Okay, yeah. So it's a huge like comic book, like. Are you a fan? Yeah, yeah. I am like a huge. So are you into like the Arrowverse that's on CW? Oh my goodness, oh, yeah. what are you saying? What are you saying? I've been there since the beginning. I am addicted. Like don't, don't. Okay, but I have to say that that is really more of a Batman story that they're just applying to Green Arrow. Yes, there it is. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> okay, we're not going to talk about it. No, it's completely We're going to get because. hate mail. We're going to get hate mail if we talk oh, about this right play, now. Play. What the business section of this? This was completely because- What did you say, Abby? But, here, but here's what's interesting is what's fun is Nobody, I don't want to go read 23,000 comic books are in DC's catalog. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of them. But they started back in 2011. Have you heard about the new 52? Yes. They've changed all the storylines. So the Arrowverse, that I'm very curious to see what they're going to do. And Black Lightning, like, <laughs> such a, <laughs> I seen it. like, I watched it, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, so good. Yeah. And that's what I was saying it. They just happen to be a black family. That story is incredible. So good. Oh, we could. Sorry. Please don't stop me on my comic books, right? Because no one thought the conversation was going to go to comics. I know. No, I know. No, no. Now I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just enjoying you more and more every moment. I have one <laughs> one. <laughs> Next week, and coming over. <laughs> one more question before we move on from the comic books. Does anyone like the new Star Trek? New Star Trek. What's the the Star Trek Discovery? Uh. You know, I watched a little bit of Picard. I watched the pilot episode. I love that they cast uh, the, the um, female. Um, I, well, I forgot her name, forgive me. I'm a purist. I like the original, like, next generation. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Spiner, Brent Spiner, like, amazing. I have such a, like, I, I think there's an audience, but there's something about that that was so original and they weren't trying to necessarily pigeonhole a narrative it was just but I don't know that was a situation where you know he's told you can't do this and hey I'm doing it do you know I'm why why Star Trek got made do you know that story I have heard that's what I mean that he he was defiant and oh, no. got it do you know who made it you're saying it wasn't Gene Roddenberry oh no he made it but you know how we got financed yeah okay. how was it financed yeah, here I haven't heard it. Okay, you're gonna love this so Desi Lu which is Lucille Ball's company. So she had two renegotiation uh, points. Now, again, don't quote me. There might've been a few more, but her two big ones were, I want the ownership of reruns because no one was rerunning. So she made her money there. Mm -hmm. B, Desi Lu, the production company is the one that made Star Trek. Wow, I did not know that. Uh-huh. I'll have to send you, I've got a, a first edition, the making of Star Trek book uh, collector's item. I will send you a copy. That is awesome. Thank yeah, you. No, yeah, it's um, one of the books that you have to read. And actually one of the guys that it was a big uh, staff writer, that's what got his start reading it. And if you're a, uh, any kind of sci-fi person, read it. It's so good. So you know, the interesting tie-in between those two things is her show was the first interracial couple on television. Mm -hmm. And Star Trek was the first interracial kiss. <laughs> yep. Ahura and Captain uh, Kirk. I was just like... James T. Kirk, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Okay, back <laughs> to the so we are, Tanya. Tanya. Two more questions and then we gotta call this. Yes. Okay. Numb. <laughs> if someone is blessed enough to get in front of you and offer their pitch, what do you want to hear? What do you want in your pitch? Oh, great question. I hey, to hold on, I gotta write notes. <laughs> okay. okay, start. Okay. It's gonna be quick. Um, so I always call it the elevator pitch because people also are hearing as in my job, sometimes you're hearing 12 pitches a day. Seriously. So you should have a two to three sentence log line, like it's blah, 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 blah. And because a lot of us need a little bit of spoon feeding, I would always suggest two tangible projects that it's similar to. So it's like Game of Thrones meets this. Don't give me 12, give me two. Because all titles. Yes. So when I'm taking this to the higher ups to approve it, they can at least know what the wheelhouse is in. And again, your perspective is which is gonna be really fresh and fun, but something that's similar so they know like, cool, that's gonna be a companion to this show or we can fit it here. Okay, I can see that. I can see that's right for our audience. 
So no two things that it's similar to. And also you should have your characters flushed out. If you're like, yeah, and so-and-so dies, I'm like, well, why did they die? All of your characters should be three-dimensional. So when you go in there, it should be a 20 minute pitch, no longer than 30. You pitch the log line, it meets two uh, criteria and pitch your three to five series regulars, mm -hmm. period. Now, a lot of places wanna see a pilot script, but if you go in with an incredible pitch, maybe a showrunner attached or a big production company attached, you can just sell a pitch too, period. So I just wanna hear, this is what it is, and I also wanna see a lookbook and okay. then a show Bible. How long do you want the lookbook? So the How lookbook, pages? Um, I can send samples, but for your listeners, um, a lookbook can be anywhere between three to 15 pages. And a lookbook is, these are what the characters might look like. Now, again, you'll use actors who, again, are not attached, but as we're getting those character descriptions, we can at least get an idea of what we're, you guys are picturing. And then you want to show what the tone in the world might look like. So if you've got an animation, you're going to want to have those animations, at least the characters sketched out. Okay. And you're going to want to show them what the world looks like. So if, if it's something like the Dark Knight, because we're going to comic books, you know, it's a dark show. You can kind of see what it looks like. And you can get those pictures from pre-existing titles online, just again, to pick like, you know, placeholders on those, those things. So... Uh, a show Bible, that can be anywhere between seven to 30 pages. If it's a half hour, that's usually seven to 10 pages. Hour long show is sometimes up to 30 pages. That is, wow. All right, so I feel like my advice question is already answered. So that's, I feel Maybe. like we went a little deep for all the authors out here who are listening to this as well. They're probably like, what the heck? But, but you Google did it. decide to get on the Meet Hollywood section. So hmm, but Google Hollywood. it because it's important <laughs> information, especially if you're trying to pitch your book, you need to know what you're doing, or at least you need to know who you're hiring to do. You know, make sure they're doing the right thing. Like I'm not. We did tell her nothing. two questions, and she only had one. Oh right, I'm sorry. But that was an amazing answer that I think covered all of the other okay. stuff. I mean, if I, if I get one more question, I want to know what charities are important to you. What do you like to support? Yes. Ooh, uh, I'm a big ASPCA uh, animal person mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and then also, I I don't necessarily have particular charities for women. But as somebody that came up through the ranks and there was only a very far and few females, I actually, every month, there's a group of women that I talk to and we will go speak at different places, et cetera. Um, but I would say my biggest one is suicide prevention and animals. Cause I, suicide definitely is, has run rampant personally um, in my family. So, and especially around a lot of artists, um, yeah. I've seen that happen. So that's something I'm very, very big on is suicide prevention and mental health. So however that kind of comes my way, I've, I, I will do calls, I'll speak at um, support groups, et cetera. That's very, very important to me. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Um, so I guess I'll leave it with, so you're on IMDB. Should, mm -hmm. How long do people look you up? I am on the Instagram, I'm on the gram. <laughs> um, it is private, but I will accept people. Um, it's at Abby, A-B-B-E-Y, Max, M-A-C-S. Um, so I get stuff there, but then I try to get to all of my messages, but I like to also move those things to a proper email. Um, so if they have questions, they can always send me an email there and then I can do it properly on an email just for like, you know, to keep it business. Um, but yeah, IMDB and, um, I don't ever check Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. Uh, but yeah, I'm always open to it. That's when unanswered, I get it. She was like, who are these random pop poets? I don't know. I'm like, if you want to professionally slide into my DM, yes, great. Abby Max, yes. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, we've had a blast today. Oh, that was not expecting. This is awesome. And I want to get everyone's mailing address too. I want to send them my Star Trek stuff to Tanya. And, oh, okay, don't worry. And uh, <laughs> you, you like wearing geek swag too, because we'll we'll get offline and I'll send you guys yeah, some stuff. Yeah, and again, this was super fun. This this thank you for coming on. You are amazing. I was like back at you. And my by the way, next time I come to Vegas, let's yeah. do it. We're going. Yeah, <laughs> to LA. I, yeah. Oh, we're going to Vegas. What up, Tanya? Where can people find you? Because you have to say your website. Because you know. We love I am you. on www.mistanyatod.com. That's Ms. Not Miss. <laughs> nice Thanks so much jade would you like to wrap us up absolutely you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com are you there you can check out everything on the home page because it's amazing mm -hmm. well no no go ahead I'm gonna go ahead you. finish it thank you 
<laughs> everything that is <laughs> like all the home page. And you like the Patreon, all of that stuff is there. But more importantly than all of that, please go to the ladies tab, go down to the middle and see the charities that we probably support. This is October. This is Domestic Violence Month. Please check out Powerful Beginnings. They're doing wonderful things in the world. They're really helping people escape. So please check them out. I mean, I know y'all that money is funny. 2020, we get it. Maybe you can donate <laughs> some time or some clothes or some resources because actually they are um, helping people get back into the workforce. So maybe if you're a professional and you, you do interviews, maybe you can help them just do mock interviews to get back into the workforce some of these people that are escaping their domestic violence. So please, if you can if you do that, that would be amazing also. And if not, just, you know, social media, at them. Thank you for doing this wonderful work in the world for all the charities. We really appreciate it. And I'm going to go with wisdom is all around you. If you're open to fight again, second this. So peace and love, y'all from Jade. And Wilnona. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening.